Well, hello there, guys. Welcome back to my room. My name's Mikey, and this is Draw with Mikey, the super casual spoiler alert, swear word alert, talk about whatever whilst I just fill in whatever in a sketchbook series. Basically, instead of something too official and pretty, it's just my opportunity to basically catch up with you guys, read through the comment section, we'll talk about whatever, and see what's going on with you. What of my favorite things to do. This is episode 82 I believe and last time I just sat down uh, for two reasons really. I wanted to uh, have a little play with a Fudenosuke uh, pen and also do some studies um, of a particular artist I follow on Instagram called Lord Grease although their work is way more colorful and powerful than what I'm just doing because I'm just playing around with ink and pencil but in a very similar vein I'm doing a very similar thing of another artist on Instagram whose work I absolutely adore uh, this one is called Sweeney Boo an incredibly talented individual again and once more their artworks like really colorful and got really nice texture I'm just having a go with inks to again get some more uh, mileage out of that pen turns out I really like it by the way uh, as well as just you know you know when you just see people's art on Instagram and you're just like, oh, I really want to draw that. Well, sod it. There you go. That's what I'm up to. And that's why we're back to the sketchbook. Enough about me. What's going on with you? Elmer's Glue says, hello, Mikey. Hello, Elmer. I hope this doesn't sound too sappy or anything. Oh, go on. But I recently separated from my girlfriend. Oh, mate. And have been uninspired to do any art. But seeing the notification for this DWM got me to try to pick up a pencil again and allowed me to relax for a bit and get back into the zone. Keep up the good work, dude. Cheers. Hashtag hardcore crew. Elmer's Glue. I'm really sorry to hear that, dude. Thank you very much for the very kind comment. And yeah, sometimes it's nice to kind of lose yourself, isn't it? In a bit of a... Uh, like a process or just a plan even when you're just sitting there like filling in black ink like really big gaps of hair for a character your mind just goes for a little wonder and you just go off into the zone it's nice i like that um so yeah wish you all the best good sir a weeb a weeb says please draw 002 from darling in the franks a weeb a weeb no worries darling in the franks i'm not even going to write that onto my because i keep a notepad file open for all of your suggestions that i steal and of course we've gone traditional i've got an actual cup of tea mug i should say Mm. instead of any of that fruit health drink that I had last time which I just commented on way too much uh, so darling in the franks I'm not even going to write on a notepad as I was saying a weeble weeb because uh, yeah absolutely on my to-do list of things to explore and investigate and possibly watch uh, you guys all in the last episode were all getting all up about darling in the franks Chrissy Hart says hi do you remember me Mikey Chrissy yes I do and Sky King Zero says oh Mikey's sketchbook oh I've missed you yeah so um just back traditional. I don't even know what it is. Like, uh, I keep unplugging and replugging in my tablet screen because I do a lot of tablet reviews. And you've got to, like, take off the software, put on the new software, blah, blah, blah. And I just thought, oh, actually, I really want to just get back into the sketchbook. It's been a while since I've done anything live, which, you know, I've only done for a very short uh, stint of time at the very end of last year. But I feel like that's part of my repertoire now, and I am sort of, like... I should get back into it but each time I just think right I'll get the tablet out and we're gonna sit down for some digital art I just think nah <laughs> nah I'm not gonna bother I'm gonna get a sketchbook out and we're gonna go traditional instead why not get a sketchbook session back under your wing it's always nice to do and Montregan 29 says cheers from Greece Montregan cheers from the UK hey uh, Malaka that's the only Greek I know I'm so sorry mm. Let's have a sip of tea. 919 Spring says, first comment and like. Thank you very much, 919. It's a pleasure to have you here. And Contemplate Tech says, another great DWM. So kind, good sir. It's clear you're out of sorts on this one because you once again forgot to ask us a general question. Lols. Oh, yeah. I was absolutely all over the place in the last DWM. Had a lot um, just on my mind and it kind of just uh, kept separating the kind of fluid singular narrative track that makes up these episodes from A to B. That was much more all over the place, although... To be fair, I think all of these DWMs are an absolute mess all over the place. I'm just grateful anybody gives them a click. That, that means you, yeah. You there, listening, feeling good, welcome. It's a pleasure. Um, I'm using OBS on my Wacom Companion 2, continues Contemplate Tech, for I have upgraded to have a terabyte of memory and 16 gigabytes of wow, fucking out a terabyte. Uh, it still has lots of issues whilst lag recording and drawing. Have you encountered this and do you have any tips on how to fix it? Love your stuff, keep it coming. Hashtag hardcore crew, hashtag full plate. Oh, mate, tell me about it. Um, oh, God. So I am a Companion 2er as well. I have such tech. I haven't used it once this year, I'm not going to lie. Um, I don't think the battery on that thing is particularly amazing. Like, if you 
plug it in and charge it and then take it round all weekend, you're kind of fine. But if you plug it in and charge it and then leave it for a week and then come back to it, that thing's going to have no battery life. Although, that's the standard thing, isn't it, with the... Uh, when you just get a bit unlucky of a laptop. Basically, what I'm saying is I haven't sat there and tried to both record, uh, well, basically have something powerful like Photoshop running, which is quite resource heavy, um, alongside like a streaming application and trying to stream art online or trying to record the screen at the same time. That is going to be very resource heavy. I kind of was under the impression a Wacom 2 or a Companion 2 should stand up to it. I mean, the 16 gig of RAM model, do you have like the i7 core version? Because uh, you can get like an i5 version, maybe an i4 or 3 as well, depending on your budget. Um, but I vaguely remember something ages and ages ago. It was like a draw of Jazz video. And I think it was like, the, I don't know if it was Companion or the Companion 2 that he had. But he managed to like do a whole live event using that computer, I'm pretty sure. Like he went somewhere and then like, had like all of his cameras and stuff plugged in to see him and see the screen and he was speaking for his microphone for it and recording his like screen I don't know if he was live streaming it or like but basically he was running stuff and recording the software at the same time and he said that it managed to do it on that whether that was a two or one so are there ways contemplate tech to dive into Photoshop and other resource heavy bits and actually reduce the amount of resources that it uses depending on what work you're trying to do I do not know good luck Good sir. Tobio says, came out exactly as I was going to start drawing. Lucky me, referring to the last TWM. Thank you. Quick question, Mikey. Okay. Every time I take a picture of my drawings, the paper comes out yellowish. Any tips on how to make my images whiter and cleaner? Hashtag hardcore crew in caps locks. Tobio. Yeah, that's the, um, like, oh, there's, there's a proper term, but it's for white balance settings on your phone, on your camera and stuff. Basically, uh, if you point your like camera, if you've got like a digital camera, and you point it at something that's just completely white, like you know a sheet of paper with some artwork on it, uh, it's gonna kind of think, oh no, everything's too white. Maybe like I need to lower my brightness settings to catch more detail. Um, so whenever you kind of like have your camera on a desk, I find this all the time. If I put my sketchbook down and it's a blank sheet sketchbook. Um, that white comes out as a kind of, you know, darkish, yellowish, greyish colour, or at least towards that part of the spectrum. And then when I start to actually fill it in with drawing or my hands go on top, then my camera decides that there's less white on there and it's more capable of um, widening its range of white balance. Oh. <laughs> I've talked to myself out of my knowledge. I've started with knowing what I was talking about and then I'm just like, and then magic happens in the camera? and it decides how white is right. Uh, so basically, um, yeah, up your brightness, up your contrast, or change your, is it gamma settings? Go in and change for white balance. That's all I'm gonna tell you. Look up white balance, don't take my borderline bullshit borderline, what can I half remember version of however that works. But yeah, that's what's going on basically. It's your camera trying to be clever on your behalf, even when actually, no, I do want a massive patch of white you're not blown out. I'm not pointing the camera directly at the sun or something. Don't worry about it. Uh, Daniel Stockbridge says, Hey, Mikey, great fit as usual. You guys are all so kind. I love listening to you in the background as I draw. I was wondering if you have any tips on deciding stroke setting commission at prices. I'm torn between lowering prices to get more commissions or keeping them. I don't want to charge too little for the time I'll be putting in. Read more. My Deviant Art, in case you feel like checking it out. Uh, and one last thing. What pen are you fucking hell? What pen are you using? Okay, so let's have a sip of tea. This is like my version of a trigger warning Watt pen. Uh, I'm gonna make a Watt pen video. Come on, I really like this Food and Oske pen now that I'm getting used to it. It's not good for hyper fine detail, um, but I really like that range of line you can get. And I do like the flow that it's got. It could flow just a tiny bit more, it'd be perfect, but it flows really, really well. But you're not gonna get the detail and more flow or vice versa, you can't have it both ways. Good pen, basically. Um, so yeah, I will get round to that. I'm using a Food and Oske Tombow pen. Uh, and oh, commission prices. So this isn't easy for anyone, I think. Um, if you take like the voice of say, people like, um, is it Hey Jen Bartel and Siren or Siren? They're quite vocal about, um, Siren especially, about like uh, not lowering your prices and uh, knowing what your time is worth. And like, you know, she won't do, like she wouldn't review half the stuff I do because I'm happy to get sent tablets. Whereas she, has a very strict idea of like actually my time's worth money you should pay me to do this or I'm not going to do it at all 
which is absolutely great. But the thing is, I want them tablets. <laughs> so I just, I do these reviews. It keeps me happy. Uh, however, her whole vibe is, yeah, be strict about that. Um, there are a few concerns as well. If you're a talented artist or got some talent and you undervalue yourself, you undervalue the industry and you make it more difficult for everybody else. Uh, if you overprice yourself, yeah, what if you price yourself out of work? What are you going to do? You need to eat some food, right? Uh, so, Daniel, I don't have a set process. I um, get to keep my commission rates relatively high because I actually have very little time to fit them in. As of right now, as of ages, all this year, commissions have been closed. I was hoping to reopen them by now. Not happened. Um, so because I have such little time uh, to do it, when I do it, I'm just like, right, okay, these are commissions, and they're a bit steep. They're going to cost this much. Uh, and I'll only get, like, a few people interested, which is fine, because I won't even have time for, like, a few people. I only have time to do one or two. Um, so I would say, whatever your minimum wage is, whatever... Uh, wage you actually need to live your life on by working a 35 hour week something like that take that and work out what your hourly wage is your hourly what you need to just earn for just doing art and stuff so you've got your your hourly wage and say doing a commission piece takes you three hours you know it should be three times whatever your hourly wage is plus uh, the price of any materials plus the price of any posting you might have to do and then on top of that you need to stick a figure to actually say, pay me this much to do this type of work. You've got your time down, um, but you need to actually put on there an actual figure to uh, create a charge. So it costs this much on average to do an A3 piece if it takes me three hours, blah, that's my price. You know, so I'm keeping this vague because I might nudge or reduce my own prices accordingly, but I don't actually have a set one for myself right now, which is the only reason I'm not giving you an exact figure. Um, but yeah, you need to understand what your time is worth. You need to understand what all of your materials are worth, um, postage uh, and any bits like that. Uh, and then I'd say a little bit on top for you. So you're actually possibly turning it into something that you can crack on with. Jaegenator.deviantart.com. I'm not going to dive in, Daniel, right now, just for the sake of keeping fluid conversational pieces going through the comment section. But thank you for the link nonetheless. Always welcome. Uh, let me know how you get on. Uh, it's really hard to get a figure out of somebody, I think, with all of that. Mine is vague right now, and mine will, like, I will flex mine. If you're, like, a business and you want me to do, like, a like a cover for a magazine or a graphic that's going to go on something, get used quite widely, I might just push you a fairly high set price. If you're an individual who just wants a one-off piece, that price is going to come down because... Uh, it's a completely different setup. Uh, uh, something, what did you say? I couldn't, I couldn't hear what you said you were drawing. Enrique-san, in a comment in another language, we're going to go into Google Translate. Something about design. I want to know how to draw soon. Oh, okay, well, good luck. That's such a vague question. I'm not going to help you there. Get a pencil, get a pen, get something to uh, draw on, as long as that thing isn't a drunk sleeping person, and crack on, good sir. King of the Agent says, Mikey Man. Hello, King. Thank you for your anime and manga drawing tutorials. I'm surprisingly getting better and better, whilst I'm also sharing my results to friends at school now. Good. But I would like to learn how to draw a character or characters sitting down, like, you know, how they'll sit on their feet or legs, and I think... Oh, no, thank you again. Thanks, man. Your art is epic. King of the Agents. Great suggestion. That's, good. That's what I keep this notepad file open for. Uh, more girls sitting. And then there's... So it's like there's loads of options, isn't there? We could do a tutorial on sitting in chair and what we're trying to show. Cross legs. Um, sitting down on the floor. And also sitting in, like... Um, uh, Tsubadach Bidei God damn, what's um Seiza, there we go, Seiza Or kneeling God <laughs> Losing all my words from other languages um, Overlord says, well, thank you Overlord And Seika1 says, love your ladies They are very sexy, but would you ever draw Kaiju, as in Godzilla and Gamera And like, big monsters Seika Oh my goodness, can I find this in time to make this worth it? Um, so personally, I don't do kaiju and big monsters. Nothing against it, never done it. Simple as that. Uh, am I up for it? Yeah, of course I am. That sounds like a really exciting thing to get into. There is a Inca. An Inca. An Inca's afoot. Some artist that I've recently discovered on Twitter. So I've, basically, I've got my phone in front of me. And I'm scrolling violently through my Twitter feed to see if I can see anything from this particular individual to give you a name. 
um, because they have done some amazing, like this kind of inked Godzilla stuff with loads of billowing smoke in the background. They've really got like the lights and darks done amazingly. Am I going to find this in a... Oh god, no, because I follow like so many fucking people on here and I have no idea who it was. Okay, so what I'm going to do... Oh, is it in my media and likes? Because I would have recently liked some of this stuff. Okay, sorry everybody else who's written a comment and is trying to see... Oh, I wonder if Mikey will read my comment this time around. No, it's Mikey just mumbling to himself on his telephone. Mikey Mega Mega... Let's go to my profile and then media? Likes! There we go. Let's go to likes. Okay. So, when it comes to kaiju and stuff, um, especially inked work, my recommendation is to look up this person, Arthur Adams. A-R-T-H-U-R-A-D-A-M-S. And what's their tweet thing? I think it's just Arthur Adams Art, or one word. But yeah, they've got some great kaiju stuff. Oh, I'm so glad technology allowed us to find that answer to the situation. Um, thank you very much, Sega. Lil Sylvest, or Lil Sylviest, says, It's my first draw of Mikey. You should do a pose tutorial. Yes, poses need to come. Um, poses and body language, and the way that you express that, and the way that you express weight and flow to characters. There is so much going on there that we need to dive in in the future, don't you worry. And Zedekiah the Metasage says, I read it wrong. I thought it said Lord Girls. Lols. Uh, so no, that was Lord Grease last time we were studying. And again, who is this? I've written it down. Sweeney Boo. Sweeney Boo. What an incredible... I love how... This is a thing. So this is like... Um, like her style, I think it's a lady, I'm not sure. Their style is like way more cartoony, obviously. But they've got a really particular way they do the noses. So their characters' eyes are fairly wide apart. Uh, and they always do the noses by doing the underside ridge of the nose and then showing like the far nostril edge, the flare of the near nostril. And then, uh, if my uh, audio sounds different, it's because I'm facing away from my uh, microphone looking at a picture of hers. But also there's this like really geometric feel. The heads are a bit boxier and squarer. And like she really like embraces like really strong cutting lines across an image, especially if it's just all, all as a cutting shadow to like really block things out. Just really kind of um, got my juices flowing recently because it's ever so slightly different to what I've been seeing a lot of through like anime and manga. Um, what? Have I just gone on a little side tangent? Oh yeah, because Zedekiah's comment, excellent. Uh, the edgy Otaku. Oh my god, an Otaku who's edgy. Can you draw Jolene Cujo, please? Who is this? Have I been asked to draw this character before? Let's go into Google Image Search. Wait, what the fuck? Oh shit! Is this like, is this like one of the generations of JoJo? Is this a JoJo? <laughs> is this a JoJo? Am I looking at JoJo stuff? JoJo's bizarre encyclopedia. Yeah, I am looking at JoJo stuff. Oh my god! I can't draw this character. I don't know which arc of JoJo she's from. Um, but I'm nowhere near wherever that is. I'm still like. <laughs> I've probably said it a hundred times. Like I said, I'm still in Egypt uh, with Stardust Crusaders team. Whichever generation is that, third generation JoJo? Like, it's literally, like, fifth or sixth gen, but it's the third part of the season or something? Uh, anyway, oh my god. Wow, you've just given me, like, a glimpse into this incredible world I've yet to come across in terms of JoJo. Ah, but Edgy Otaki, I can't do it um, yet. And to think, I made mockery of you using how edgy you were in your name and yet you've given me some great eye-opening moments lovely rose says hi hello lovely rose thanks for commenting and jericho cross 97 says first of all sketchbook is back yay oh you guys like the old sketchbook were you getting um were you getting a bit sick of the old tablet um it's nice to mix it up isn't it uh, now for oh now for my art your design to come back oh shit yeah look for the artists that really make um oh i look for the artists that make really abstract stuff on instagram also if you want to sit down and have a laugh at dubs look up my first girlfriend is a girl to be honest i thought the anime was bad but the dub is extremely hilarious i don't know if i'm gonna have the time for that i will copy that part of your comment now just in case control v you never know uh, anyway, when you get back to Twitch, I'd be happy if you gave on for a play. Honestly, I believe you will enjoy it. Jericho Cross, hashtag Carcal Crew, hashtag Notification Squad, hashtag Sip of Tea, hashtag Danganronpa, hashtag DWM, hashtag Have Yourself a Biscuit, hashtag Sorry of the SA. No worries, dude. Oh my god of us. Hashtags. Mmm. Oh, good old tea. Um, Jericho, yeah. Do you, oh, of course you hang out. Um, so, yeah, need to do more Twitching. Absolutely. 
Danganronpa, I've said that wrong, is, uh, we're not going to play that anytime soon. Dude, I've got like a, uh, oh god, oh shit, I've just had a glance, there's so many games we started but haven't done anything with. Monster Hunter World, we played <laughs> once, played it for like four hours or something, three or four weeks ago, got to do that. Um, there is Resident Evil 7 that we're playing, Uncharted 2 we're playing, oh Jesus, Doom we're still technically playing, oh my god. Dead Space is on the to-do list. Oh, there's loads. Uh, what was... Oh, fuck. Witcher. Of course. Fuck, that's such a good game. Uh, yeah, there's there's loads of stuff we've got to work through. Oh, my God. What is this? Just having a look. And Oh, yeah, I've got to play Arkham Asylum because Ken keeps saying we've got to do that. And... Oh, shit. So I've just started having a look at my PlayStation collection, but it's getting very dusty. Haven't played any games for a while. Yeah, there's a lot to do, Jericho, basically. Danganronpa. <laughs> this is how I like to remember it now. It will be in there somewhere. Keith.Adams says, I really want to learn to draw, but I don't know where to start. But when I do try, I seem to just give up. How do I get around that? Keith.Adams. Um, remove distractions. Have yourself a nice, quiet place that you can dive into some artwork. Uh, some people prefer music in the background to get in the flow. Some people like to be left in silence. Some people like to hear conversations in the background. Go somewhere where you're not distracted. Don't have your TV on or anything like that, though. Music's all right, but things you're supposed to be looking at, audio visual, aren't going to help you. They're going to pull you away from it. Um, and then you just seem to give up. Well, Keith.Adams, find something that really gets your juices flowing. You say you really want to draw. What is that? Is it like something you find on Pinterest that really just thinks, oh, look at the line work on that, or look at how this character design is so good, or look how much just action's happening, or look how cool this whole image is, or how crazy that monster design is. Dive in and try to recreate it, get your teeth into it, get some equipment. Have a go. Keep having a go. If you keep giving up, though, mate, can't help you. You've got to force yourself through it. It's not a perfect world. Uh, and your art might not be perfect art, but force yourself to actually complete a piece, even if it's got a mistake in it. Just actually go all the way and just see how you feel about things. Takaki Kido says, 35 minutes 50. What's the art book he's talking about? Can anyone tell me? Did I talk about an art book, Takahaki Kido? Was I asked by somebody if I do an art book or reference an art book? The one book I usually mention... Um, which I've been mentioning since uh, like the end of last year, Rock Solid, is... I can't see it from here, but I know it off the top of my head. It's Michael Hampton, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-H-A-M-P-T-O-N. Michael Hampton's... Um, oh, fuck. Uh, how to Draw Figures or Figure Drawing Book, Design and Invention. Something like that. Um, but that's always a very good one I find as a go-to. Riel Asfire says, Am I the only one who sees that invisible sketch on the sketchbook? Riel Asfire, is that where I'm... Um, because as you'll notice in this one, as in the last one, um, I'm actually really lightly going down with a pencil a little bit just to map down what I'm doing. Um, with the last one, Lord Grease's work, it is not like my work at all. She is an incredible talent. But it is a bit more of a style of drawing that I'm used to. So I kind of just sat down with a pencil and started putting things in. With the stuff you're seeing on screen now that I've recently been just filling up my sketchbook with, simply because I dare to do so and have such pleasures, is Sweeney Boo. I had to look again. And um, because, like I was mentioning, she embraces such a geometrical quality, I did need to map out in pencil like these rough kind of zones and shapes and roughly what I was doing with the body before I dived in with that Fudenosuke Tombow pen as well. But I'm fairly pleased with where it went and, again, really in love with her artwork at the moment so you know i'm all up in that instagram riel asfire says oh wait <laughs> i just read it don't worry tojo misogi says hi mikey hello tojo your tutorials help me a lot thank you so much you're welcome much love from vietnam keep up the great work well right back at you from england chilia barbarosa osuna says hecho de menos verte on twitch Ooh, uh which is nothing i understand except for the word twitch I miss you in Twitch. Oh, man. Shilia Barbosa, Asuna, I miss you too. Um, hecho de menos. Uh, okay. Hecho de menos verte. What's that? I miss you. I'm going to try and remember that. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's got to come back. But um, just a few things have started filling up my time recently. I'm just having a little stop of your comments and a little think in my head. So today's Thursday because, you know, it's running a little bit late. Thanks for catching up this upload. Um... I have to... Actually, I've got a busy weekend of drawing. 
And Monday and Tuesday, I have a review and I have to do some Patreon stuff. So, maybe Wednesday? <laughs> I don't want to commit. Maybe Twitch on Wednesday? It's probably not going to happen, but it might happen. Melanie Pagan says, literally, just sitting here listening to you talk. It's kind of relaxing. Melanie, oh, that's very kind of you. Um, I like her, how to put it? I like I don't live in a well everybody has like a frame through which they view the world right that's human nature I like to think I'm not living in too much of a fantasy in that I'm a fully grown man wonderfully proportioned and like uh, uh, I am aware that my voice is not like the bassiest soothingest voice out there it's kind of a little bit nasally a little bit English I mean I don't care like live your life I don't hate myself um, but sometimes it's not the most interesting thing to listen to so if some of you guys take kindness to that and actually like the sound of this voice oh my god it's only due to the fact I'm running it through like a hundred thousand filters to up that sweet bass and do a few other things to it to make it sound nice and professional really random side thing do you remember when and to be fair, this is probably when I was going on loads of su loads of sidetracks and getting very, very angry. There's loads of trigger warnings, but basically, uh, we went through this long phase on DWM where we discussed the difference between um, oh whether or not people prefer really good quality artwork in our manga, or if they would let that be sacrificed for the sake of a really good quality story, or vice versa. And um, it's a really similar thing I personally find in video production, where like. Uh, what did I firstly... What did I do first? Hmm. Struggling to remember. Anyway, what I'm getting at is that when I first started the old YouTube, as probably most of you know if you've seen it, it was all done on my phone. Literally, that's it. I had a really old Samsung Note 2, which I bought secondhand, uh, hung it on a coat hanger, and just recorded from the phone, and that was all the visuals and all the audio and all that sort of stuff. Um, I would... or I personally, I should say, actually find it easier to sit through a viewing experience where the audio is really good and the visuals aren't that great and vice versa. So I'll forgive a YouTube video if it's not looking completely amazing, if it's got nice clean audio and it doesn't annoy my ears. But even if I see like a video or like say you've got like some people doing an interview and they fucked up their lavia mics that day, even if they make an excuse for it or explain it in the beginning. Um, even if you're watching what you're used to, when that audio's off or it sounds really distant or really crackly or too fuzzy or like it's behind a sheet, that really just annoys me. It really just triggers, doesn't like make me just think, oh, this is terrible, but it does take me out of the pleasure of the experience. What I'm getting at is that basically um, I value at least good quality audio on a good video. Um, and then, and as long as you got that, I'll forgive a few of the visuals. And then ideally a great video is a great video. Same thing in manga. I'd much rather forgive bad artwork for the sake of really loving a great story than try to force myself through a story I'm not interested in simply because the artwork is amazing. I hope that makes some sense. Was that even a question or have I just gone on another one of them tangents? Oh dear. Anyway, uh, MTO Art Official says, I hate the third act thing that some of the anime does. Death Note was by far the worst one, IMO. Um, not read all the way through the manga, but if you're talking about the Death Note anime series where one character is replaced with another character, yeah, I didn't appreciate that either. Also, could you draw Vice and Mature from King of Fighters? You can't just draw one, you've got to draw them together. Look them up, you'll see why. You can also draw Iori with them if you want, not necessary. MTO Art Official, always a pleasure to have you. Vice and Mature. You guys do realise, right, that... What happens is that you guys suggest stuff. I'm amazed by it. Uh, thankfully, I make a note of it now. Um, like, I add it to favourites or add it to the notepad list. And then once every, like, three months, I'm just like, ooh, I've got a free Sunday. Ooh, I'll go, I'll go and have a look in that notepad at all that suggested stuff and maybe start watching some new anime. Like, it is so rare that I get to do this. And I, I won't stop because I... I believe in hope, everybody, all right? I don't want to live in a world that's just like A equals B and nothing is of interest anymore. I live in a world where I hope that it can get better. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm still zombie-proofing my house and think that things are probably going to get a little bit worse and maybe um, we're all going to burn in a nuclear Armageddon. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. I hope we won't. But um, I still have the hope, you know what I mean? And in that is basically my way of saying I will always take your suggestions for good anime or good artists because somewhere I hope that I'm going to find a moment to actually look them up. Okay, let's look at your character. Mature is literally what they're called? What? 
Oh, okay. So you've got this. There are two ladies in suits. One's like a short haired brunette, one's a blonde. And then what are they like? I mean, I'm just looking on Google Image Search. Let's add that as a favourite. And we'll come back to them another time. Vice and Mature. I don't know what their story is or why they're together. Are they a duo when you play them? Oh, wait, here we go. Mature or Machua appears as a member of Iori's team, the King of Fighters 196. The designs of the time created both Mature and Vice with the image of a ruthless woman and a cruel woman. Oh, one's cruel and one's ruthless. Rufio. Excellent. Okay. I do like the idea of that. See, this is the thing. If you give me a little bit of story behind a picture, I'm just like, ooh, my juices are flowing. My imagination's kicking off. Uh, Alexander Ford says, Kelly Who is the actress in X-Men 2 or X2? Alexander, thank you very much. That was a genuine... <laughs> and then you've repeatedly put the actress cast as Lady Deathstroke was Kelly Who. Like you've done it like four or five times. Don't worry, your comments do show up. Thank you, by the way, though. Kelly Who. I remember Lady Deathstroke looking hot in X2. Is that just a memory because I was young at the time or younger? Nah, she's a hottie. Kelly Who, H-U. An American actress, artist, and former fashion model. Oh, well, there you go. And Miss Hawaii, USA 1993. Well, there we go. Let's leave that tab open for later. Let's go back to the Daniel Stockbridge says, Hiya, Mikey. Hello, Daniel. Love the video. Got some good work done to your dulcet tones. Thank you. I'm glad you got something productive happening. I drew zero. Oh, no, I drew zero two from Darling in the Franks. Wow, more Darling in the Franks chat. Glad to see that getting recommended. Cosplaying as Morrigan from Darkstalkers. You're cosplaying as Morrigan. Awesome. Also, as someone who reads a decent amount of fan fiction, I can say it's a, yeah, a very mixed bag. A hefty amount is either fundamentally bad or badly written. But there is a lot of great inspired work by extremely talented artists. I feel like the crappy writing has turned people off to the idea of fan fiction, the same way you say hentai and big booms turns people off anime. Anyways, any tips on setting commission prices? Oh my god. Daniel, did I not just read that exam? Just... Daniel, I have. Like, I thought I was going crazy then. You've double commented. Not that that's like illegal or anything, but I was just like, surely, surely I've read one of your comments already. <laughs> I have indeed. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah. I'm not even going to go on my whole thing about like why I don't like the fact hentai puts people off anime, blah, blah, blah. People find it hard to believe I'm not a hentai artist just because I'm not scared to draw curvy women and teach people to draw it. But you know what? You can't explain yourself a hundred times over i really don't mind um however yeah that same issue being a thing in fan fiction if there was great fan fiction out there the thing is is like if your fan fiction's too good you're gonna get sued do you know what i mean like if your fan fiction is more popular than the original that's going to create a problem and bad fan fiction is kind of like so there used to be this weird stigma in like 60s 70s in particular where you had a lot of saturday matinee stuff and like entertainment events on british tv i'm assuming it might be similar in the states where you used to have a load of comedians and it's kind of like the same attitude to like you know that old joke what do you call the guy who always hangs out with the band the drummer because you know the drummer's not really a musician or a talented artist he's always the guy you just have to get because you need someone who plays drums that's obviously like you know wide tar brush joke thing but basically um in a really similar vein of stand-up comedians they always used to have this thing where comedians never felt threatened by impersonators people who did like imperson impersonations as their main act instead of actually comedy as their routine um were kind of always often viewed as being like the drummer in a band they're not really funny they're just copying people and had that kind of really it's really faint vague stigma i think for kind of attached to it in terms of the hierarchy of who reckons they're better than who fucking crazy time to be alive um anyway wait what the fuck am i talking about so yeah in a kind of really similar vein is like you can love and feel really passionate about like a character in an ongoing story or just for like the story in general the world that's been built um but if it's not the main creator of a main team behind it and now somebody else takes over that project or um you've got some fan fiction that you're going through in the back of your head you're always just kind of thinking it's not the real deal do you know what i mean like, it, it, I, I reckon, like, uh, you're absolutely right, by the way. A lot of it is bad writing, people who haven't got the skills. And that's not bad. If you want to make some fan art, go for it. Express yourself. I'm not hating at all. But in terms of, like, very legitimate, like, is it as good as the original? Often I'd probably say not, because it's simply not the original. 
you can do anything that's really really similar but as long as it's not the original it's never going to be as good or as bad because it's simply a completely different entity done by a different individual anyway the bit that i'm slowly trying to wander down a garden path to at the end of that sentence is um oh, i've forgotten <laughs> i felt like there was one more point i wanted to make something about the fan art yeah basically it's never it's never gonna be the original thing and it's it can be really difficult when like that stigma stops you from like taking enjoyment out of it oh yeah so here we go so basically i reckon if like because as you probably know i fucking love game of thrones um if you put down something in front of me and said mikey here's another chapter from the upcoming game of thrones books because like a few of them are out there already give it a read i would read that and i'd be like oh fuck it's great i can't wait to read game of thrones if you gave me that exact same document i'm pointing furiously at the desk to prove my point if you gave me that exact same document and said mikey this isn't game of thrones but it's like someone's done a fan fiction chapter out of the next book give it a read i would read that and i would probably psychologically be like yeah it's not quite game of thrones though i can see i can see how it's not quite written the same way i can see how this character's not quite as they should be and that's all in my head if that makes sense so if you find good fan fiction that really carries it on and makes you happy be happy for the love of god um but for me personally like i i do struggle to engage with it or find it really really good um doujins don't count obviously for that kind of answer nobody said hey mikey have you ever seen or heard the anime called overlord i really like the main character but i have trouble trying to draw him overlord nobody is the um, i think i've heard of it this is the so this is one of those turn it on its head and see if the idea is still any good so we've talked about the fact that i don't really care about sword art online i don't actually have a problem with it it's just one of the most common examples I have, which is why I keep bringing it up when I talk about um, not being able to relate too much to a story, even though it looks good. Overlord is a really similar russet, isn't it? It's like people stuck in a video game, except this guy's stuck as being the most powerful evil character or something like that. And then he kind of works out what he's going to do with his life or something. So, uh, yeah, I'm actually really curious about that. Um, I will be giving that a watch sometime. That's on my suggested reading or watching in this instance. And also, so thick, so juicy. Nobody must not quote Mikey. <laughs> You've quoted me from something. Mikey, 2018. Uh, Grayon Quantum. Wow, that's that's a lot of consonants in your name. I hope I've said that anything like it should be. I just want a little heart. Oh, I just want a little love, mate. Tough, in it? Jeffrey Lee says, damn, these are nice to listen to whilst I'm working on my own art. Oh, Jeffrey. Have you not realised the magic which is Draw With Mikey, those DWM episodes? Every week a hot new random topic from your comments <laughs> and just me mumbling away. But yeah, absolutely. Have this talky-talky whilst you do the old drawy drawy and hopefully you'll get nice and productive in the background. Some young guy says, hey Mikey. <laughs> you just giving me a flashback to Wayne's World. I'm just going to sip some tea. Hi, uh, can I have a milk of some young guy? Uh, some young guy says, hey Mikey, can you draw Bulma from Dragon Ball Super? How does she look in? Ooh. So, I obviously know who Belma is. I've heard of Dragon Ball Super. Does she look different in Dragon Ball Super compared to... Bulma. Images. Dragon Ball Super. Oh, yeah. Her hair's a little bit more... Swish-cut sideways. Yeah. I'll be honest. I want to do loads of Bulmas. I've already... Like, I haven't drawn it or put pen to paper... But I already pretty much know exactly what my Bulma fan art looks like. Um, quick description, it involves Dragon Ball and it involves the bunny suit from original Dragon Ball. But then we'll do like a later stages older Bulma as well. I'm sure we will. I do need to do that actually. I'm really up for doing that. What's really annoying is that oh, I really want to make like a painty version of it though. I don't know how to describe it. Again, I need to do a practice run with textures to get that Dragon Ball looking right firstly like glass and glowing uh, effects and then yeah we need to do that i'm just going to remind myself what i should do is a really rough sketch of how i want bulma to look in the sketchbook so i don't have to remember these things because that's the whole point of having a sketchbook anyway uh damafi says hey mikey your art is amazing thank you damafi and your tutorials have helped me a lot good to hear could you make a video about child proportions i need practice thanks for considering yes we can uh child figures and how to construct just putting a note this one obviously will be completely just 
how to learn to draw a child with no it's going to have no etchy connotations at all because god i don't want to like my house is actually quite near a school <laughs> so like, this is just a random side note um so basically i don't ever want to be in a point in my life where i'm just like where somebody would look at my work and be like i'm a bit worried about that mikey and those young characters he keeps drawing <laughs> because if somebody said right okay i mean this is a complete aside from the fact that if like you're a pedophile you need to you know leave kids alone and seek some counseling or some help and you know whatever or you know if you're an active one you just need to go to jail be stopped it's awful but well, one of like the side things that worries me is also that like whenever you hear jokes of like oh you've got to be like 400 yards from a school or any one time or something like that i actually live quite near a school so like sure if you're into kids it's really really bad Obviously, I'm only saying that because it's the internet and sometimes you have to preface these things. Um, but what's also really annoying is that if I ever got into kids and then I got like um, caught up by the police, which quite rightly, um, then I've got to move house as well. Just annoying. Just inconsiderate. Anyway, uh, so basically that's my way of just prefacing. Yeah, we'll do um, how to draw child figures and stuff. Why the hell not? We should learn to draw everything if we can, if you're you know passionate about drawing. Um, but yeah it's gonna have none of the, none of like that cheekiness to it whatsoever gotta play it safe for youtube yuri bremner says t is overrated yuri get out read more now that I've <laughs> read more now that i've got your attention just joking you son of a bitch glad that you're more active with your facebook page and post art from other people just wanted to say nice job everybody your art is great yuri bremner you cheeky son of a gun yeah finally i i set myself a little task recently of in terms of things I'm adding to my work day. And as I sit down for 45 minutes every morning, not every morning, and uh, try to catch up with those Facebook comments, I have now answered every comment up until December last year. So we're getting closer and closer. Um, I've answered almost everyone. Some of them are just like, please send me a tablet. And I'm just like, meh. Um, so yeah. Everybody's been submitting really incredible art on Facebook, which is great, and it's a pleasure to grab some of those and share it out onto the thing. People seem to enjoy that. I only made a Facebook page back when I was starting Ish the Old YouTube a few years back because I was like, oh, I, I should have a Mikey Mega Mega Facebook, a Mikey Mega Mega Instagram, a Mikey Mega Mega uh, Twitter, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I was like, what, what the fuck is this Facebook for? I don't. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Turns out, it just turned into this massive repository where people were sending me their artwork, uh, which is great. I love it. It's got a function. People seem to enjoy that, and I love seeing what you lot are drawing. Owl Rin, or Owl Rin, says, Hi there. I'm following you so much in this period. I'm trying to learn as much as I can and how to draw a manga character. Well, good luck to you. Uh, your tutorials are awesome and extremely accurate, but my question is, what's the order you think I should watch them and practice? Owl Rin, oh my god. What order to do the Mikey tutorials? Um, there are the super, super beginning tutorials, which I've done completely separately from the main rack. Um, so you can always watch those. In terms of the anime manga tutorials, start big, go small. Um, how to draw characters, the general ones. Uh, how to draw proportions and body size. Uh, and then you can go into the head in particular and the features. And then you can go into the torso in particular and the arms and the legs and the feet. Uh, and work your way all over. That might be one of the routes, um, but everybody's got their own journey on a whole art thing. I won't go into a big spiel about that, even though it means so much to me, because that's what's so exciting about the world of art and creative stuff. I fucking love it, because it's different from everyone, and then we're all on a slightly different page, but we all have a similar passion. What a time to be alive. God bless society. Uh, but basically, yeah, everyone's got their own routes. Uh, find it for yourself. Mix them up. See what you want to do. Um, my stuff isn't quite set into a course as much as I just try to make tutorials about things when people want me to, but we do need to turn it into a course. Hashtag, I need to make a book. Toby Draws says, looks really nice. Have you got a new pen? Toby Draws, I do have a new pen, you charmer. It's a Food Nose Tombo. Thank you very much. And Gus Shonenmaker says, hey, Mikey. Hello, Gus. Could you please do a couple of studies or videos? And as always, great work. Keep it up. What? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always doing studies and videos, mate, unless you're laughing at the fact that I didn't upload the last two weekends, in which case, ow, man, come on. Um, yeah, studies of what? Videos of what? I'm doing a study right now of um, Sweeney Boo, had to look again, uh, and making videos of DWM, so hopefully I'm fulfilling part of what you wanted. Drawing by Ike says, I want to draw a noose, please, thank you. Oh my god, drawing of Ike, do you need to talk, mate? And Extra Terrace says, I would like to see you do rake studies one day. I'm following Ryo Agawa, Bokuman Studio, 
cut sexy robots and rake. Well, I am stealing Briar Agawa. I know who that is. There, oh, that person. I need, I'm not following that person either, but I know who that artist is because I've seen them on websites. That person is incredibly talented. I love how they draw their characters. I'm adding all of these names to my thing list. Thank you very much. Rake. So this is the thing, like, um, Lord Grease, Sweeney Boo, I don't know these pe people particularly well. I've literally found them on Instagram through suggested lists. So I haven't really dived into their artwork. They might have YouTube channels for all I know, and I'm not following them. Um, so I don't know what they're about. So I find it, this sounds really weird, but like, I find it easy to kind of be like, oh, I really like what they're doing. I want to draw it. Here we go. Today's DWM, I'm doing some studies of this character. How are you guys doing? Uh, someone like Rake. Rake has been like a really strong influence on my art style, and I've followed Rake's kind of work for years. Um, and even before I knew who Rake's, who Rake was, I've seen his work around. You know, like you can always pick out a bit of a Rake image. Uh, and he sometimes does live stuff on Twitch as well. It's always a pleasure getting up in his chat room and saying hello to him. Uh, oh, but like that's intimidating. You know what I mean? Like. Rakes for big player. <laughs> He's got some incredible skills drawing sexy girls. Um, maybe one day I will get my teeth into it if I grow a pair of balls. But yeah, we'll see how we go. Oh, I'm kidding. There's nothing uh, stopping me from just scribbling out some rake in a sketchbook right now. Why not? Space Duck. Uh, 52 minutes, 33 seconds into the last video. You've got a little timestamp. Thank you. Uh, you say, uh, Kakoin stand is a Hierophant Green. Hierophant Green! One of my favourite characters. Emerald Splash is... Yeah, so I... Um, I think I got it all mixed up. I couldn't remember what any of this stuff was called because it's been ages. I was like, Emerald Wave? So, Emerald Splash you is his signature move. But, yes, you're right. In his debut, his stand could inhabit and control people. He could also attack just using his paintings when he first attacked Joe Toro in a debut episode. But Araki forgot! <laughs> Fuck, you're right! Space Duck! There's probably like 110 YouTube videos about this, but you've only just uh, steamed up my ardour on such things. Yeah! When Kakuin first comes across it, isn't it like, oh, he's at the bottom of a flight of stairs outside the school and he's doing a painting? And he forces, like, characters to fall... This, am I making this up? He forces, like, Jojo to fall down the stairs? He inhabits other people with Hierophant Green. Has Hierophant Green not done that since? I'm sure... He, has Hierophant Green been, like, inside somebody when they were being inhabited by another stand all at once and it was, like, an internal struggle? But yeah, he's got long range emerald, uh, emerald splash stuff. Did the Raki just forget that Kakuin's character could in? Oh fucking hell, the world of stands, eh? So this is, this is amazing because like I look at that and I'm just like, oh wow, cool, they're stands. Because I'm used to things like Nen, um, and like you know just conjuring techniques uh, from other manga, but like that all came first. Like all that shit about like, okay, have it so that it's a fighting manga, but your characters aren't powerful. They're just people, and they're susceptible to everything that people are susceptible to, but their stands have fighting power, and that's where all the magic and fun is. Oh, what a brave move to go from, um, <laughs> just fanboying over early JoJo again. What a brave move as a, an artist, Araki, to go from, like, because everything was, like, um, sunlight overdrive, sunlight uh, stuff. And just different ways to use a really good sunlight energy to combat against the vampires and then even better the pillar men oh those pillar men um and then to completely switch up how everything works in terms of the magic of the universe for the next chapter bold that is a bold man right there i'm very very impressed bold people impress me who do this here's a really random side thing as well that really really impressed me i literally it blew my mind and then it impressed me less because he went back on it. But um, if any of you guys follow Casey Neistat, he's obviously even bigger now than he was on YouTube. But at some point, he was at like maybe four and a half million subscribers. He'd been doing his vlog for something like maybe almost two years or something. I'm being really vague here. So all of his like, if you imagine like his YouTube career was going up. His revenue was going up. He was making more and more money every video from the last because, like, more and more people, like, you're, the ball's really rolling. And he did something really fucking bold. He said, you know what? I'm really used to making daily videos. It's become no longer a, an artistic project for me. It's become, like, a process. Like, uh, I know all of the tricks and the rules to just do A, do B, do C, and then you've got a video today. So he quit. He was just like, I'm out. I'm not making any more um, daily videos because... Uh, 
not because like he hated it or stuff but because he felt he was so used to it he wasn't learning anything new anymore bold like anybody else would just be like well this is making me loads of money of course i'm not going to stop doing this and then slowly die inside probably or you know have to pick up something new bold move instead he was like all right i'm going to just find something else to do with my life i've reached the top of what i personally wanted out of this i'm done i'm going to do something next and that i couldn't fucking deal with it i was like wow this is what it is to be a fucking like you know air quotes fort leader and stuff and really just pioneer and do stuff under your own steam to not be afraid to take something that's great and completely disregard it for the sake of exploring something else i was like wow uh, and then like a few weeks later it's like i'm coming back to youtube i miss doing videos and then you know he's back uh, which is fine really like that guy he comes across um uh really genuine whether or not you know you agree with him or not but like i like what he does in his videos but my god when he quit i was like oh my god i should be quitting stuff this is fucking amazing Anyway, uh, sidetrack again, talking about bold stuff. But basically, yeah, Araki's got uh, a lot of my attention for doing a lot of amazing stuff. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, there's some really thick, hefty comments going up here. And I've barely made a dent on the comments this week as well. I'm really sorry. Barely done any scrolling down. Oh shit. Oh shit, there's loads. There's like 150 comments in this comment section. Okay. Okay, guys, we're going to do a little bit of scroll and dash. Let me just say a great big hello to, you know, Little Dark Light, Koji, Dr. Hook, Son Goku, Vampanenum, Ray Honey, Michael Mist, and Co. Because uh, I'm scrolling my way past all of you, I'm so sorry. Just for the sake of picking up a few random comments from a little bit deeper in the section before we wrap up today's episode. Akira Ishin says, The interesting thing about a race, there's actually a lot of find out intro. Oh, this fuck. I've picked a bad one, boys. I've picked one that's really big. Anyway, Akira Ishin, I'm going to read your comments. Rules for the future. Please make them brief. <laughs> Please help me out. Uh, the interesting thing about a race is that there's actually a lot I find interesting. It's how much they cut from the original story. First off, the title of the original is a town where I don't exist. This tied back to the main character's feelings for himself and also what Kaya, the abused girl, thought about herself. Interesting. Second, the ending was rushed as a manga actually had two additional arcs written during the point where the anime ends. Oh, all the shit where he sleeps his, sleeps his way through 20 years. I went on a big rant about this last episode for anybody who missed out. Uh, the first happens after Satoru gets out of hospital and befriended the little girl. Oh yeah, that was a bit of an add-on, wasn't it? Uh, he gets caught in the same kind of way, trap and bait stuff. Second arc uh, was for Killer's upbringing. There's also a lot to this piece of the story and adds a good chunk to the final showdown as it gives more character to the Killer. Ooh, interesting. Uh, it's like that really fucking awful thing. At the end of the third Fifty Shades of Grey book, didn't they, like, didn't they rewrite the first chapter from the first book, but it was done from the point of view of... Um, Peter Gray, the main guy. I, I don't know what his real name is. Um, so yeah, sometimes it's interesting, sometimes it's fucking awful. Uh, and finally, this is just a fun fact. I don't think you know what fun means. Did you know that Erased is the first professional story ever released by the writer? Crazy! That is crazy! Oh my god! That's really good. I'm glad I read that comment. Let's have a quick scroll. Hello to all of you lovely people. Sorry I'm missing out on what you've got to say. Blah 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 blah. I hope you're always having a good time. Tony Torres, Nancy's Arts, all you lots, Millie, Millie, Ishan Verma, let's go for a load up a completely different section. Okay, great. GD Brown, hello, that's your comment, excellent. Uh, U012, hey Mikey, were you, you ever ink using nib pens and ink? U012, yeah, I've got myself a uh, G nib and a Tachi Komen nib, traditional ink uh, pen things. I haven't massively gotten into it. Uh, it's not really worked out for me that um to be fair i've never given it a solid go i've only had a little scratchy tie try from time to time but that is something i'm gonna have a practice with before i make my let's talk about pens video william t fox says hey mikey this is my first time commenting william you're very lucky because i uh, just picked you out of a random uh, i never do this so i decided to give it a try welcome could you do a tutorial on mech or mecha and one more thing is do a dwm of ayla bosak ayla bosak who's that Lol, bye. <laughs> William, thanks for commenting. Hey, Lebosak, I'm just going to go into a new tab. Oh, it's a Rainbow Six person. So last time, like, somebody was like, draw Rainbow Six characters. And I'm like, there are no characters. They're just people wearing armor, right? I can't, I can't see anybody. Turns out, Ayla Bosak is a person with green hair. Thank you very much for the suggestion, good sir. Oh, we've learned something today. I'm going to have to just favourite that 
as well. One more comment before we dash. Let's go back. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Oh, excuse me, I'm having a little bit there. Let's have a little sip of tea. Oh. Dustin Hobson says, could you draw a flat chested girl? I love the boobs, but I want to see how you approach drawing girls with uh, less boobs. P.S. I love your art. Haha, -ha, thank you very much, Destin. Yeah, that's um, always good. I need to do more flat chested characters, you know, just so that I don't get. I was going to say so that I don't get a stigma, but I've definitely got one already. Uh, and Kawaii Cookie says, 59th like, uh, woke face. Oh, yay, Mikey said my name. I should comment more. Yes, you should. I've been watching your videos for a year. Thank you. Uh, this year is my second since last year I'm drawing. Since last year my drawings were shit, now I'm getting the hang of anatomy, but not to the point where I exaggerate body types, though. Kawaii Cookie, really glad it's been of some use. You bloody delicious people. There's so many... Oh, like I'm, I keep scrolling and stopping my eyes on some of your comments. They look really juicy, like good conversations. You know the rules. You know the score, guys. Number one, if you've read... Read? Wow, if you've read this far in a book, the book's alive and it's audio. If you've uh, just hung around this deep into the episode, you have a hashtag hardcore crew. I really appreciate you letting these videos run in the background or do whatever you're doing. It really helps Mikey out. Uh, so thank you so much, guys. If I've missed out what you had to say and it's a really juicy comment or something really important that uh, you really think's worth a go, copy it and paste it into the comment section of this video with any like, I will... Cool. With any luck, I will catch you next time around. And, of course, the only reason why I have the time to do this is thanks to those delicious people on Patreon who make all of this possible. So let's give them a quick shouty shouty. Much love to my delicious patrons, including, but not limited to, Pushing Since 93, oh my god, <laughs> Team Over Bemo, uh, Jorgen A, Yendrick H, Garrett C, Brownie Wars, Azek, Aurorius777, Ryder 2 kx Angry Hermit, Ray C, The Clamps, Joe R, Kylie Art, Retriate, Michael S, Trent H, Adam D, Matt H, Lukes C, Wes B, Carlos R, Connor M, Raymond B, Julio Felix O, Jamie, John Hall V, Alex, Gyro P, Trent P, Simon B, Taylor S, Jake Y, Live on Kill, Icy Dotori, Rory A, Homongchi L, Thomas C, Ollie, Garrett, Cogleaf, The Cartoon Cynic, Christian L, Minion715, ICZ, Adam T, Zahaki, and Kurt D. My goodness, thank you very much, you 20 bucks and up patrons, for your support this month. I need to get cracking on uh, your rewards, don't I? Uh, this weekend and the beginning of the upcoming week. And, of course, there's a whole ton more that have been joining in. Uh, all of the various different tiers. What's Patreon about? It's how I feed myself and how all of this is possible. Thank you so much for your support. Um, but also where stuff gets some a bit more interactive. There's, like, worksheets, copies of my artwork, the digital stuff, me talking through all of my drawings, blah, 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 blah. You know the score. Give it a click. Go take a look if you're curious. And if you're not, don't worry about it. I'm just really appreciative if you're like, you know, passionate about drawing and art and stuff and you like hanging around on the channel. Have yourselves, guys, a bloody lovely week. Yes, to answer one of the first comments I answered in the beginning of this video, I still haven't come up with a question. Um, but the title of this video is obviously going to be Sweeney Boo Studies anyway. Um, anything you guys want to say? Any other video games, anime, manga suggestions or any other questions? All topics are allowed. And I'll see you guys next week. Take care.